Hey, what's up? It's Gazbot, and I'm back with Gazbot in Japan, day three. Uh, sorry for the delay in between them. Uh, I've been busy with client work and, and my After 100 Days videos, and I took a trip to Hawaii in the meantime, which I won't be doing a series on. Uh, I did do that an update of the uh, 100 Days of Making Comics Hari for production update, so if you're so inclined, I'll put a link below to that one if you care about my Hawaii trip. Not nearly as interesting as, as my Japanese trip. Anyway, these things take a little while to put together. Uh, hopefully, day four won't take as long to put together as day three did, uh, and if you're watching them in sequence after the fact, you could disregard all of this, but for those that are actually waiting, I felt you deserved an apology, so here it is, and hopefully I won't have to give you one at the beginning of four. Uh, so this day, uh, we start off at Fuji-Q Highland after our harrowing, harrowing, harrowing adventure getting there the night before. So let's fade into the hotel room, shall we? <laughs> This is out the window from uh, Highland Resort at Fuji-Q, which is the second hotel we've stayed at. Oh my god, we've only been here two days. Uh, seems so much longer. Um, that's the little bus that takes you straight to the theme park, although we may skip the theme park because we're both pretty beat. Um, over there is where we were dropped off uh, by the train last night when we had our little adventure. And uh, it actually looks like we could have walked it pretty easily, but it looks like highways, and we didn't know where we were, and it was cold, and we were exhausted. So we got a taxi. Uh, that's some sort of church? I don't know. Uh, but there are big light things there. Uh, I thought that was Mount Fuji there, but this one looks a lot bigger in front of us. Um, one of these mountains is Mount Fuji. One of them. So you probably see Mount Fuji now. So day three finds us at the hotel heading out to Fuji-Q Highland, the amusement park, but it is snowing, we are exhausted, and uh, we were way further away than we thought we were. What was interesting is there was a pile of snow right outside the Fuji-Q entrance. We weren't even sure if we were going to go into the theme park, we were just kind of checking it out and going to take a couple pictures, maybe grab some coffee, because uh, we didn't have a ton of time. But I couldn't help but take pictures of all this cool stuff. This is, I believe they're just called Highlander or Highland Ranger or something like that. Um, and it's their version of the Sentai team, which only existed there. And I would have loved to have gotten like an action figure of it, but I, they didn't seem to have anything, not even a vinyl. Uh, but the branding was amazing. It was on everything. There was different art on everything. It wasn't like they kept reusing the same picture. Um, as you can see, they had cartoon versions and they had actor versions. Uh, and I was just in love with the whole concept. And it was really a big thing I wanted to get a piece of merchandise of these characters. It was a bummer I couldn't. Here's the cutout of the actors. Uh, me, I joined the team. I was uh, Gaijin Highlander. <laughs> they had a bowling alley in inside the kind of gift store and they had their own, you know, ranger guy there for that. Uh, hot coffee machine. Not sure I took a picture of this, but that's what I got. They had a gas station on the way out and there's the Highland Ranger guy. You know, I'm, I might be getting the name wrong, but again, I I loved the branding and I know it's like crass commercialism and it's gaudy and it's terrible but I love it it's so maybe it's because it's so 80s <laughs> you know and then it just appeals to me but I just sort of love the unadulterated unabashed over the top sort of you know we're spokesmen superheroes look there's me as red I'm so, so excited to be you? chilling um, we're in the little village before we go in we haven't even actually entered yet uh, and it's snowing it's uh, it's straight up snowing a lot where people are leaving uh, we went to get some food. I got this little cheese thing. It was like in Katakana. It said fromage, which is French, but uh, I was able to figure that out because I knew that one French word. And uh, it's kind of a bummer that it's snowing because things might be closed and we're getting wet. But it's kind of awesome because we're getting snow on our trip, which, and I love snow, and it wasn't a planned thing. We also got free um, umbrellas or kasan from the hotel. So I'm going to eat my cheese. Q, you want to say anything? Q doesn't want to say anything. Nom 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 nom, eat my cheese. Nom 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 nom, I'm a big mouth. Nom 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 nom, I'm American, feed my face. Bow, bow, bow. I don't know if the video is picking this up, but it's it's like blizzard level snow coming down right now. It's fantastic. Q, Q is less excited about it than I am. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, that snow was crazy, uh, and I totally enjoyed it, and I, I could have spent all day just standing in the snow taking pictures. Uh, but we did find Evangelion World, which was open because it wasn't a roller coaster, and it was one of the main things I wanted to see there. Going inside, uh, it was a lot of statues. Um, there was a few exhibits, but really for the most part what I got out of it was a lot of photo ops, um, and uh, I was pretty happy with it. 
Uh, some of the pictures came out better than others. This it was hard to kind of capture this. It actually looked a lot nicer in person. The uh, the main Ava unit, and I'm a very casual Ava fan. I watched a few episodes of the show, and I saw the first two of the new movies, and I like it. But uh, I more enjoyed the theme park aspect of it than um, than knowing. It. You know, there's a lot of characters and stuff that I wasn't 100 percent sure of their names and that kind of stuff. So uh, this was some kind of art titanium thing of of the uh, the fork thing from the sh from the movie uh, and I couldn't read this obviously other than titanium art evangelion so whatever that was and here I am at nerve headquarters plotting I should make that my profile picture oh. <laughs> That guy was awesome, um, one of the monster Ava units, um, and I just kind of turned a corner and boom, he was there, so it was pretty great. Always were cool environmentals where it made it seem like you're in the headquarters uh, and they had cutouts of some of the characters that you could pose with, like here in the elevator. Uh, and like I said, a lot of environmental stuff, a lot of photo ops, more than it being like a ride or anything like that. It was more like an interactive museum. And similarly over here, they had these fake snack machines where real ones would be and then cut it out of the character. Uh, and I wanted nothing to do with him. I'm like, no, sir, please leave me alone. I want snacks. Uh, and this was, like, I guess the main thing most people probably come for. This was the hangar bay where the Ava, um, I forget what number it is, but the main Ava from the movie and the shows is. Uh, and this hangar was huge. I was up on a elevated area, which I'm not sure if I was supposed to be there. And here's me in front of it. And so it's supposed to be, like, the shoulders coming up out of the ground. So I guess it's roughly life-size. Uh, and it was very impressive. Um, it was lucky when I went in here, there weren't many people. You can see there's Q way in the background. That's where I was taking a picture from earlier. Uh, and I wanted to just jump right on top of it. That was my profile picture for a while. Um, but there was a, a guardrail, and I, I imagine people would frown if I went and you know jumped in its mouth or something. But it was pretty cool. Uh, and Q took some fisheye lens photos. And one of me as well. Here's me thinking. Hmm, is that an Ava behind me? Yes, sort of. A pseudo Ava. Ava, Possible. How did the Ava not work? Uh, yeah, there was like a 10 minute thing where you watched it and it lit up and it blew smoke and everything. Nothing really moved. Kind of like the Gundam. Well, the Gundam head moved at least a little bit. But it was all light and smoke and sound. But they did have original animation, which uh, was cool. And it seemed like the original voice actors from the show, although I can't be sure. But that, that was kind of the main show. Here I am, you can't see me very well, but this is Evangelion World, this is one part of it. Uh, when we went to Fuji Q, we got a free admission without rides because of the hotel we stayed at. Uh, and then this was eight bucks to go in, and it's been totally worth it. It's, it's awesome. like Ava presentation robot and that sort of museum room. We went into another area with more uh, photo ops. Th these ones are better, as you can see, like pretending we're an Ava unit coming up and it had little scale people. Uh, and um, it, it had a few more of these, I don't want to call them mannequin statues. They were like almost life size. And these were kind of scattered throughout. Um, some of these pictures might be slightly out of order, but everywhere you went there was photo ops. So if you're like me and like to take pictures with, of yourself in front of things, you'd enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people were mostly taking pictures just of the things. This one is more designed to be in it, where you're like in the cockpit of another unit or a tandem unit. Hey, we're buddies. Look at us buddying it up. Um, uh, so it was weird. It was like kind of they had the cardboard cutout ones. Uh, there's Q, uh, that you're kind of, 
I guess there's no reason you couldn't take pictures with all of them, but it seemed to me that I was taking a picture with everything because I'm an egomaniac and an American. This was awesome. It was uh, sort of the energy field they generate, you know, where they, they push through. And so I did a headbutt. Um, but it's cool because that's the sort of thing you'd see done in Photoshop or with like a digital camera, you know, like stand up here in the front of the green screen, but it was a practical effect. And, and it, it's uh, interesting because I was thinking like, oh, well, they do Godzilla and Ultraman and stuff like that, but this is an anime. So this is like weird practical effect stuff they built for the anime. <laughs> uh, this is another cutout where I'm, look at me, I'm getting some kind of alien crucifixion and I love it. Again, more interactive control panels. Like, I can only imagine if you were uh, like a kid how fun this would be. I mean, I had a ton of fun as a ridiculous adult, and if you were a child, it, you would just feel like you were part of, you know, that world. Q actually has a raincoat on, um, but it worked really well because it looks like some kind of lab coat, which fits right in with all this science-y stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, that I don't remember what that sign was for. <laughs> but this is an example. This is the cardboard cutout stuff with nobody there. So obviously it's set up like, hey, come sit next to this character. Hey, look, here's the, he's playing a piano. Wouldn't you like it if you were there when he was playing piano? Well, now you can be. You could stare dreamily at his lovely hair as he plays for you. Uh, and then there's this chick. Man, I'm really, I can't remember any of these characters' names. I'm really bad. Uh, see, I'm, I'm right now I'm like, what is her name? Oh, God, she's going to say hello to me. Hi, lady, girl. And, uh, yeah, so here's another mannequin guy. And in a minute, I'll probably stand with him and be like, yo, man, we're mannequin buddies. Yep, see, there I am. Oh, see, he didn't remember my name. I'm like, you don't remember my name? Because I'm a hypocrite. Uh, this is the gift shop. They had another Ava statue. It's funny because this one photographed better. The other one was probably nicer, but this one I got, like, I don't know. I feel like it got captured more, maybe because it was less detailed and so there's less to capture. I forget if these are cookies or, like, towels. Everything was bra branded Evangelion. Uh, here's characters. And, again, these are some kind of biscuits or whatever. Tons and tons of stuff. That everything I went to pick it up. Oh, underwear. Yes, lovely, sexy Evangelion underwear. But everything was branded, and I wanted to buy it, but I didn't want cookies. These were Legos. These were awesome. I wanted that Ava head, that pen pen a friend of ours would have liked. Not for sale. Not sold out. Nothing. There was just some little display. That was, like, one of the best things there, and they weren't selling it. Anyway, back outside, and it's time for food. We kind of had to get going, unfortunately, but I saw this, some kind of volcano pizza. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, went in there, had to have, and you can see they have English there, uh, serving for oven to your door, which is weird because they didn't deliver. I had to get my own personal pizza made to be vegetarian, and I used my broken, uh, you know, Japanese to get it. Open it up. Well, it's vegetarian, but what the heck is it? It wasn't pizza. The closest thing, it was sort of like a deep-fried cheese quesadilla. And I'll tell you what, it was delicious. wasn't pizza, but it was delicious. This is one of my favorite pictures uh, from that day, certainly, but also from Japan, with one of the uh, Highland Sentai. I wish it had come out a little bit better, but it was snowing, and he had a jacket on, and there was a bunch of kids, and I was able to get in there before he left. Um, so that's kind of my souvenir as opposed to the figure that I wanted. This, I think, was a retired car from one of their huge roller coasters. They had some of the biggest roller coasters in the world. I didn't go on any of them. They also had a really famous... Uh, like evil haunted house hospital I wanted to check out, but time, weather, everything else. Uh, this was the new character who I think was sort of an anti-hero. I don't know if he eventually becomes good or what, but uh, he's with the rest of the team. And there's that little Jason. I guess he's like a bad guy peon or whatever. And this is just the steps going back into the... Um, souvenir shop, but they were nice. This is a uh, Ryokan watch. I'm probably mispronouncing it. You can see there's some Pikachu and Pokemon on the left, but there's way more of the Ryokai watch. That's definitely going to be coming over here. These are the Toku heroes, the Sentai heroes. Q and I each got a little keychain of them, and that was as close as we could come to getting uh, actual action figures. One more picture of the bowling Sentai on the way out, uh, and then we were heading back up to get the bus in the hotel. I don't know what this was. Some kind of digital dragon. Thought it looked cool. And uh, this is on our way out. There was some sort of couple romantic celebration. I didn't know what it was, but that was part of it. So as we left the hotel, um, we were looking for the bus to get us back to the train station. And it, as I said earlier, it was sort of a short trip, but it was across highways and stuff. And uh, most of the people there, at least in the morning, uh, didn't speak English uh, at all. Uh, maybe a word or two, but it was the kind of thing where we were speaking more Japanese to them. Uh, than getting English back, which is funny because the night guy seemed to speak more English, so it's weird anyway. 
Uh, but the customer service remained impeccable, aside from loaning us, uh, you know, umbrellas, I don't say hotels, they loaned us hotels. Well, they loaned us a hotel room, but they took money, so it's not really a loan. But anyway, uh, we were looking for the bus, and he kind of pointed it out to me, and we went over there and, and stood, and I'm like, oh, I don't think this is it, and we kept going. The guy must have been watching, and like, ran out of the hotel, and we were like, past where the buses pull up, we were, we were like, you know, far by that point, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, he's just like, no, and he's like, kind of indicating, over, over here, stop, stop, so we had like, overshot it, and he ran out and, and came and got us and that's just indicative of like the crazy customer service uh, that we got um, and I talk about that a lot because uh, you get it at McDonald's and you get it at a nice hotel and you get it at a crappy hotel and you get it at kind of everywhere there's very few stores like the bad customer service I got was like mediocre customer service here you know like I never got actually bad customer service almost at all I, there might be one exception uh, that I'm forgetting right now but uh, the other thing is, in a second, I'm going to transfer to uh, the train station, and it's funny how it's daytime and it's nice, and it's just like, oh, here we are at the train station, whereas the night before when we're freezing cold and there's no bathroom and we don't know where we are, it's like, oh, we felt like we were, you know, in the middle of Harlem at, at 2 in the morning and there's drug dealers everywhere, and I don't even know if Harlem's, like, dangerous anymore. That was kind of the stereotype place that was dangerous in New York when I was a kid, but it's probably fine now. So I'm not besmirching Harlem. <laughs> but anyway, it's just, again, one of those things like dark and light. Humans are so funny that it makes such a difference. Anyway, th here's the next day. We're out getting on the train. <laughs> And it was super nice, and we, we kind of thought maybe we got on the wrong train, especially considering what we had been on on the way down. It was kind of the equivalent of a subway, and it seemed to be in the middle of nowhere. And You know, it wasn't dirty, but it was very Spartan. And then on the way back, we had these nice plush seats, just the two of us, and there was like the equivalent of a stewardess almost walking up and down, asking if people wanted food. And, and there was like a lot of mountains and, and like stuff to look at. And part of it, again, is the whole day to night, but we definitely were on a whole different train line, even though it was like the same basic ticket. Like we got a round trip ticket. Um, and maybe it was just like because we were coming from Fuji Q Highland, we got like this extra, you know, cool train in the beginning. Uh, but whatever the case, it was a much more enjoyable ride, even though it was very long uh, on our way to our next stop. Um, but there was like a little waterfall. And originally, I was just going to put this footage in here, but I realized if I didn't narrate over, it would be pretty boring. But I kind of wanted to include it because it's the only time you ever see like the countryside. Here we are getting off. You can see the fancy uh, Fuji Q characters. This was a common thing you saw like about not jumping into the tracks, which is kind of the same stuff you'd see in New York or anywhere, I suppose. These were some cool tankers. I don't know what they were, but I liked them. Uh, and as I mentioned before, every train station has multiple vending machines of all kinds of good stuff. Hot and cold drinks and, and ice cream and, and everything. Um, and this one had this tomato drink, which is essentially like tomato soup, and it's the only place I ever found it. I was so psyched. I'm like, I'm going to get this all the time. Never found it again. A lot of uh, really steep escalators. That's cute, giving the thumbs up. Here we are on our next train, which is more back to the kind of, you know, nicer subway uh, sort of train. And finally, we made it. Uh, we were a little bit lost, and right as it was getting dark, we made it because we saw that sign to Sanrio Puro Land, which is Hello Kitty. And you can see way down in the distance that little rainbow arch. Um, and I had, I don't know if Q had looked this up, I just looked up that it existed. I had no idea what it looked like. As we approached, it was crazy, because it looks like a theme park, but it's just in the middle of, like, strip malls and houses, and it's just like, what? Where are we? That Tato station, uh, I was dying to go there, but the Puro Land was closing in, like, an hour and a half or something like that, because as I said, it ended up being way further away than I realized, so we were kind of rushing to get there. And it was surprising an amount of people still going in and out, and it, it wasn't cheap, so we weren't the only fools paying full price to go in for, like, an hour. So once again, it seemed like uh, a lot of photo opportunities uh, was one of the main things this place was about once you got inside. Um, and there were three levels. At first, I thought there was only two. And on the top, uh, this is us on the top, and there was another level on the ground floor. And there's not a ton on the ground floor. There's a gift shop and a few other things. So the top had a little cafe and a couple photo spots and some characters. Uh, this was something on a wall. Uh, <laughs> it's some kind of collage thing. I was trying to get a good shot of it, but uh, I couldn't. Uh, and then, you know, a Hello Kitty seat, little sculptures, there's a little popcorn machine. 
this guy was sort of at the entrance of an area that was closed already. Uh, I think it was some sort of vacate yourself. I couldn't tell. But this was the cafe that was open. Had a lot of Hello Kitty Sanrio themed treats. Q and I both got a sort of strawberry cappuccino drink, which sounded good and I thought was disgusting. Behind us on the wall, there was a video screen kind of playing different shows and stuff they did. And I was beginning to think we kind of missed everything. Oh my god. I can't believe there's more. <laughs> Disney's got nothing on this place, man. This is amazing. No, but it's so concentrated. Play meetup. I don't know what it was. We kind of skidded out of there pretty quick. This was the bathroom, the men's bathroom. It was beautiful and cute and ridiculous and horrifying all at once. I loved it. <laughs> and a toilet. Ooh, you're going poopy? Ooh. Oh my god, you guys. This is in the bathroom of San Rio Land. Oh. <laughs> These guys invited me back to their house, and then we did this weird bath thing. I loved it. Oh, this is cute, man. It's very goofing around. Oh, look, he's just putting his, his butt in his buddy's face. Why not? And, oh, there's, there's a terrifying clown. And, uh, more poops. Which way? I'm not sure. I saw a kid do it. Maybe press that button, too? Look, it's the Japanese version of Surfworks.
experience of Sanrio Puro Land, I felt a little goofy. I felt like, oh, we're adults, we don't have kids, we're Americans, we're kind of out of place. It's like, it, it just seemed like not enough to be worth our time and the money and the effort we went and going there. Once we went downstairs, it was like mini Disneyland, and I forgot how old I was, I forgot I couldn't speak the language, and I was in love with little Hello Kitty cats because all the decorations were great, everything was done, you know, to the 10th degree, or the nth degree, rather, the 10th may not be that high. This show, which started off as two, you know, furries dancing, quickly became an awesome laser light, light mapping projection with, like, sparkle, like, you know, it was just a, a, a fantasy wonderland to behold that, uh, that made my cynical heart warm up. Uh, and then these are just some random shots on the way out, but uh, as goofy as it sounds, I kind of picked this place because I thought Q might enjoy it and we might get a kick out of it, but it was way better than I thought it would be, and I enjoyed it uh, at least as much as her. And uh, I, I, as weird as it sounds, I feel like it's a must-go if you go to Japan because it's such a crazy experience. Uh, and we were only there for like an hour. We could have maybe spent two hours or three. You don't really need that much time. Uh, maybe if the other areas were open. And this is just a gift shop on the way out. One funny thing is we were checking out maps, and I got stuck next to this machine for like ten minutes. Needless to say, that phrase and song started driving me insane after a while. So, goodbye, Sanrio Puro Land. Uh, you were shockingly good. Th on the walk back, hit up a couple gachapon machines. Uh, I, I, this was not my first uh, encounter with them because we had seen them in Gundam uh, Cafe and stuff, but this is my first time in the wild on the street. Uh, and then I did take a quick run into the arcade which was my first uh, arcade experience, and it had a lot of UFO machines or grabber machines, uh, one of which had Pringles, so I took a picture. I didn't have time to really play anything. I just literally ran through because they were closing in a few minutes. Uh, I don't remember why I took a picture of this, but this was on the way back to the train. Maybe this was when I was still enamored with Katakana. On the way back to the hotel, we took the first of many stops at a McDonald's. They had some Doraemon toys. Uh, both Q and I talked about getting them, and we never did. What was cool is they had corn, which I got, and vegetarian french fries, which I also got. So that was my dinner. Uh, this was a weird sign I saw on a door coming into the hotel. Uh, I assume you're not supposed to store swords and machine guns there. Walk into our hotel room, once again, vending machine. Awesome. Not super expensive either. Had some tea and water and things like that, so you could just grab them and not even have to leave the, the hotel. Very small. Um, the, the other hotels we stayed at were large, American style. This one, it's hard to see, but like there was only a few inches clearance on my head. Uh, 13, 13, Mockingbird Lane, like the Munsters. No, that was just our room number. Uh, and the room was small. This was a divider where the bed was right next to the bathroom. It was really hard to get a picture of it. Maybe I took some better ones tomorrow. Watched a little TV. Found this random show where they were interviewing a manga artist. And this is him talking about his influences. Uh, I forget what book he did. It wasn't somebody I'd heard of. But even without speaking the language, it was interesting. Because then they showed him drawing. And it was just such a weird, lucky thing for me to catch. So that was day three uh, of Gazbot in Japan, um, a little bit of Quell in action, uh, and I know it might seem like she's underrepresented, but I did a lot better job of filming myself doing things, and uh, she doesn't always want me sticking a camera in her face, especially when we're on vacation, she's trying to look at stuff, so don't think I'm a jerk, it's, it's, it's by design and by her desire that she is underrepresented in these videos, although she does pop up on occasion, as you've seen. Um, the uh, Senrio Puro Land was, again, way better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, we went to Rem Akihabara, was the hotel we stayed at that night, and it was our first time in Akihabara, which is where both of us knew, like, that was the one place we had to go, because that's, like, the geek mecca and everything. Uh, but it was kind of sad, because we, we rolled in late, so everything was kind of closed, but we could, like, see, oh, look at all the billboards, oh, this place will be great tomorrow. And then we walked around, couldn't find anything open, and got the McDonald's, as you saw, and watched a little TV, some of which made sense, some of which didn't, all of which was entertaining. Uh, and that room was tiny. Those pictures didn't really do it justice, but it was like what you think of when you think of people talking about small Japanese rooms. Still had a great view, a big window looking out, like even that small room still had that. But it was like uh, the bathroom had a, a curtain you could pull down, and if you didn't, it was just the bed was next to the shower, was next to the toilet and stuff. All that being said, it was fine. It was perfectly comfortable. It, you know, the bed was fine. It, the, all the amenities worked. It, it had air conditioning, had TV. Uh, and how much time do you want to spend in a hotel room if you're in Japan anyway? So, totally fine. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one. Uh, I'll be back, hopefully not too long. Uh, more than a week, less than a month. That's my goal for, <laughs> for day four. All right, this is Gazbot from, well, I'm from America right now, but I'm sort of in Japan in these videos. 
Uh, it's it's kind of, uh, I, I realize I'm about to sign off and I'm cutting myself off, but just, I kind of am glad I'm doing this because it's helping me extend the experience of having gone to Japan and help me relive moments now that time has passed, so it's almost like I'm getting to enjoy it with you guys. And there's the box of stuff, mostly toys, if I'm being honest, uh, that I go through as I do each video. So there, it's like I'm getting little presents of souvenirs to myself after the fact. This time, pretty much none, because the only real souvenirs I bought were snacks and things, which we sent to other people from FujiQ, and the little keychain guy, um, which I showed you a picture of Q's. Actually, I don't know if I showed you a picture of mine. Um, but if, if I can find it, I'll show it to you next time, because I put it away somewhere. Oh, also, I got a nerve badge. I'll show it to you in one second. Hold on a second. Uh, sorry to cut into me, uh, but as I was putting this video together the next day, uh, as you can see, it's daytime now, uh, I remembered a few things about day three that I didn't have elsewhere in the video. Uh, nothing crazy, but just worth mentioning. Uh, one was that at Sanrio, well, both were at Sanrio Land, actually. Uh, one was that after we went to that area that kind of looked like cosplayers and but but maybe not maybe it was characters and you possibly had to pay for it it might have been an invite which is why we kind of left it just seemed really awkward but near that like off to the left where we were allowed to go for sure was uh, a sort of it seemed like a dealer's room or uh, it wasn't the gift shop i mean they had little gift areas everywhere and then they had a big gift shop at the end but it was it seemed like a, a really thematically concentrated flea market or a really small comic convention, um, but it was all tables, and unfortunately I didn't get any picture or video of this, but it was all tables like you'd see at a comic convention, a small one, not like San Diego or something, uh, with Sanrio and Hello Kitty themed things. And some of them were semi-official, some of them were vintage, uh, and some of them were like, hey, I, I knit, so I, I did these, you know, Hello Kitty pillows or whatever. And so that was just interesting, and this was a Friday night, so it might have been a weekend thing, it might have been a, oh, this was a special one-time thing, or maybe they just always have, like, a flea market there. But it was unusual, it would be like going to Disneyland and then having, like, a little, you know, area of private vendors selling their Disney-related art and, and toys. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing was, they had costume characters, uh, a la Disney or a la Sanrio Land, because that's where we were, um, of Hello Kitty and the like, and when we were sitting there having our cappuccino things, uh, near where that screen was, one of the characters, like their changing room must have been behind that area, one of the characters came out, and I forget her name, uh, she kind of looks like a punk rock bat cat character, it was actually one of the cooler characters that I saw, kind of black and hot pink and stuff, and I was facing this way, which is like where the whole cafeteria is, behind me is just the wall, and apparently they walked behind me and decided to interact with me specifically, uh, maybe because I was a man, maybe because I was American, maybe because I was an adult without a child. Whatever the reason, they zoomed it, probably because I was an American and I was on the edge as opposed to Q. But it was a thing where I was sitting there, you know, drinking, and then you get that kind of like, Brrr. Oh, oh, hi! Oh, uh, oh, and then like, mm, like pointing at the drink, I'm like, sure, you can have... And then we had this, it was kind of fun, but also became awkward, because I was like, well, I'll be a sport and play along, but I didn't know what they wanted me to do, so I'm like, you, you want my drink? Sure, you can have it. No, no, you, no, you can't have it, you know, <laughs> like, I didn't... Uh. So, so then they, they did a few more things, and they were there for a while, like 30 seconds to a minute, but it's that kind of long 30 seconds to a minute, where by the end I was like, oh, phew, they're gone. Uh, but it was, it was kind of a fun experience, and I, I get the feeling that... Uh, maybe the other people eating, the, the Japanese natives and the children, got more a kick out of it than I did. Not that it wasn't fun, but, like, I kind of didn't understand. Is this comedy? What's... Are we comedy? Are we com... We're comedy! We're comedy! Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled me. I went and got the nerve badge. Uh, I got this at the gift shop. You can kind of see. It's a little bit shiny. That's me. And they gave me a coat to wear, and they let me put my name in in English and everything. Uh, and, uh, it's got a little barcode, which I never scanned, which I probably should. And it's got a branded lanyard, and it's kind of like the thing you'd get at Comic-Con for free. <laughs> After waiting in line forever. So, I think, it, I want to say it costs five bucks, maybe ten. It was more than I needed to spend on a little piece of junk, but not so much that I feel bad about it. I was like, give me that, sure. No waiting? I'm a nerve agent now. Hey, let's go pilot some Avas, shall we? That's, that's how I should have talked the whole time, make everyone think it's some weird American accent. Hey, how are we doing? Is this Evangelion world? Great, I like a badge, please. It's almost like a John Wayne if he was way weirder. Anyway, I tried to sign off like two minutes ago. I'm going to sign off for real now. Uh, if I find the keychain, I'll show it to you next video. Thanks for watching, if you have. Uh, if you just fast forward until the end and watch this, that's very bizarre. But if that's what you enjoy, then I'm glad you got some enjoyment. <sighs> ah!